Hi, my name's Chris. Welcome to my studio. I've been painting in watercolor for about 18 months now. And in that time, I've learned a few lessons, seven lessons in fact, and I wanna share those with you today. Let's get started. So let me begin by admitting I haven't been painting in watercolor very long, 18 months. That's not very long. But I have learned some lessons. And maybe you, like me, are beginning this journey in watercolor. Maybe you're frustrated. Maybe you don't know if you're on the right track. Uh, and so as another beginner to another beginner, I want to share with you what I've learned in the first 18 months of painting in watercolor. Let me start with the story. It was about 18 months ago. I actually about two years ago, I went on a hike up in the mountains. I live in the Pacific Northwest and it was a hike and sketch. And I was sketching, making some simple little sketches in my sketchbook. Uh, and all of a sudden I exclaimed out loud, um, I feel so alive. And something triggered in me in that moment. And that really was the beginning of my watercolor journey. I realized I was tapping into a part of me, that creative part of me that I believe is made in the image of God. Um, and by doing that creative work, I felt so alive and I knew I had to keep painting. I knew I had to keep painting watercolor and, and pursue this experience that is a part of me. And so maybe you felt that way too. If not, maybe you will as you begin this journey. And so a few months went by and I got serious about it in the winter, uh, that next winter. And I, I committed myself to really painting in watercolor and, and getting better at it. And one of the first things that I did that was encouraged by friends um, that I was painting with was to share my work online. And so I got, I created an Instagram account that was devoted to my work and I created a Facebook page uh, for my artwork, my watercolor, and I began to post. And it was amazing. All of a sudden I started getting all this feedback. And people were like, this is awesome, I love this. And, and the encouragement alone, just that feedback, um, was so encouraging and motivating that that helped me to continue to push past some of those early frustrations in watercolor. And believe me, there are a lot of frustrations or especially early frustrations in watercolor when you're beginning to paint because it's, it's a challenging medium. And so lesson number one of my seven lessons in this video is share your work. Find a way to share your work. For me, it was social media. It doesn't have to be that way. It could be other ways. Um, but it's such an easy way in our world today to share your work with a wide audience um, is to create an Instagram page, create a Facebook page, and share your work. So that's lesson one, number one. Uh, shortly after I started sharing it, I decided to challenge myself. I decided to do a 30-day paint every day challenge. I'd seen other people do it, and um, I decided to do it myself. And so every day after work, I'd come home, I was tired and all, and maybe I didn't want to paint, but I would sit down and paint something. And um, sometimes they were just simple little paintings, but I would paint every day and post every day. Funny thing was, some people, after I did it for a few days, if I didn't post or if I was a little late in posting that day, they'd be, where's your painting? Why haven't we seen your painting today? And I was like, oh my goodness, people are holding me accountable to this challenge. Um, the real lesson here though, lesson number two is to paint regularly. If you want to get better, you need to paint often, regularly. You need to be consistent in your discipline of learning to paint. And I found by setting a goal, setting myself a challenge, and then painting every day, um, that that was really helpful. I made huge strides during that 30-day period um, because I was being regular, uh, being very devoted to it every day. Um, shortly after that, um, I, it was kind of a funny story, maybe weird by some people's opinion, but I was actually at church and I heard a talk about creativity. I have this great church that supports the arts. And in that, a person was talking about art and about creativity. And they really encouraged us to create a space, maybe even call it a sacred space, um, where you set aside that space to paint, to do whatever your art is. For me, it's painting. Um, and in that, in that talk, I came away um, realizing I needed to create a dedicated space, a space that, where I could go daily, and it, that space was devoted just to my watercolor. And so out of that, 
uh, out of that talk at church, I decided to create a studio. And I've done another video uh, on my channel here about my studio and how it's set up and all that. Take a look at it if you're interested. But lesson number three for me is create a dedicated space. It doesn't have to be a whole room. It could be a corner. It could be a closet. Some place where you can leave your materials out. They're handy. They're ready to go. Uh, and that place is just for you to create in. And so I encourage you to do that. Shortly after this, I created my space. I was painting. I was painting regularly and all that. But as often happens, I kind of hit a wall creatively. I was painting, but I didn't always know what to paint. Uh, I was bumping up against a lot of technical problems in my watercolor. I didn't know how to get over some of the frustrations in watercolor. I just realized I didn't have a very big tool belt of techniques with which to paint. And that was a problem. And so I kind of hit this wall of frustration. And at that point is when I started really watching YouTube videos pretty regularly. I found some artists that I really was inspired by their work and I began to watch them regularly. And this leads me to lesson number four is you need to be willing to learn from others. However you do that. YouTube videos is one way. DVD lessons is another. Taking an art class somewhere is another. Um, there are so many ways. Just getting together with a group of friends maybe that paint uh, in similar medium as you and uh, in, in watercolor in this case. And just it's paint together. And uh, especially maybe if they're a little bit better than you or you admire their work, this can be very instructive. But for me, the easiest way to do it was YouTube videos. And I began to watch. Now, one warning here. You can fall down a rabbit hole of watching YouTube videos and spend all your time watching videos um, and not actually painting. So you need to be aware of that mm, potential problem. And you need to remember that maybe for as for as many minutes or hours you spend watching videos, you should spend that much time painting, okay? Just set yourself a little, a little uh, goal or a little standard uh, for your, your consumption of lessons. You need to paint, okay? Remember that was number, lesson number two, paint regularly. And so, but number four, learn from others. It's, uh, it's important and good to learn from others. And this really helped me. I learned techniques. I learned how to push back some of those frustrations and to get better. Um, and so I encourage you to do that. Um, and so then as I went along, as I was learning from others, I started to hear from a number of people that there were certain materials that maybe are better than other materials, uh, paper, paints, brushes, all kinds of things. And I started to realize that the materials I was using, um, were maybe not the best in particular. I want to especially emphasize the paper. I heard from a few people that, um, if you can use 100% cotton paper, it can really make a difference in your results. And in fact, if you learn on substandard paper, paper that's not cotton, that's pulp, uh, cellulose, wood pulp paper, that later on when you switch to, co to cotton paper, it can be almost like you have to learn all over again. And I didn't want that to happen, <laughs> okay? And so I went and got some cotton paper and invested in that. And I have to agree that the paper, especially the paper that you paint with, is really important. And so lesson number, are we number five now? Lesson number five, I learned that materials matter, okay? The, the quality. Now, again, you can go crazy here. I, I, I watched one post, a lady was saying, I actually think I like buying watercolor products more than I like painting in watercolor. And I had to chuckle because I think that that is also another area that we can um, maybe make a mistake in is we get so consumed with, oh, I got to have the right materials that we never paint. Again, back to lesson number two, paint regularly. You have to paint, okay? No matter what kind of materials you have, but materials do matter, okay? And getting some good paper and maybe investing in some professional level or artist level paints I think is also important because the vibrancy of the color and all is a little bit better. Um, th these things can help. So materials matter. So I continued painting. I got a little bit better materials. I was having fun. It was going good. I was learning some things, listening to other people and how, what they, what they could share with me and my techniques were getting better. But somewhere along the line, I decided, I thought that I needed to paint big. I need to be, paint in large format. In order to be a real artist, you need to paint um, you know, on a large format. And so I was trying that and I was getting frustrated. 
And uh, again, I think I came across somebody who, who painted always in smaller formats. And I decided, you know what, I need to do that. I, I listened to a blog, uh, a blog post by somebody also that was saying that he often paints small. Small meaning like six by nine inches, something like that format. And um, I decided to do that and give it a try. And it, you know, it really helped me and here's why. Um, you can paint like three small paintings potentially, maybe in the time that it would take you to paint one larger one, or at least two small paintings in the time it would take you to make one larger one. And so by painting smaller, you can maybe paint a little faster, um, get, your, get work done more quickly, and have more reps, more repetitions, right? And as with most things, the more reps you get, the better you get. What do I mean by reps in painting? Well, you know, the going all the way from the beginning of the painting, the sketching it, the first wash, multiple washes if you do that, um, finishing up the painting, putting in the details, all of that represents an entire process of painting a painting. And um, each part of those, there's techniques that go with that that, that you, need to, um, you need to develop expertise in. And so the more you do it, the more you're gonna develop the expertise. So painting small for me uh, was helpful. Okay, so that is lesson number six, paint small. And then let's get down to the last video. By the way, if this has been helpful to you so far, um, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel um, and maybe even hit the like button on this because that helps more people see it and all that, that'd be awesome. Um, so let's go on to the next, the next and final step, number seven, lesson number seven. And that is that you need to eventually paint what you love. Maybe not eventually, you should do that from the beginning. <laughs> paint what you love is lesson number seven. I realized that sometimes I was painting what other people thought I should paint. Uh, I started getting commissions actually. People were asking me to paint. I started painting a lot of dog portraits. I like, I like dog portraits and I still do them um, and, um, and all, but I got into a rut where all I was doing was painting dogs, right? And I realized I wanted to paint other things. There are other things that I really love. I love landscape. I really love to paint people. And so by getting myself in a rut, painting what other people wanted me to paint, even though they were paying for, for it, and that was nice, I realized I needed to paint what I love. So whether it's, oh, and another area I learned is that I saw some people were painting in a really kind of realistic uh, style, and I was kind of trying to emulate them, and I realized, you know what? I'm really drawn to this other style of painting that's more loose, expressive. And so both in style of painting and in subject matter, I realized I needed to focus on painting what I love, what I like. And because painting is not just technical, it is also heart led. It is something that springs up from within you to do this creative work that you were made to do. Um, and you need to follow that. You need to follow that love, that thing that you enjoy doing and paint what you love, both in subject matter and in style. And so I have not completed this lesson, nor have I completed any of the other lessons, really. I'm all learning all of these things still. Um, I still share my work. I try to paint regularly. I created, I've created a dedicated space and I'm keeping that set aside for painting. I try to always be learning from others. I realize that materials matter and I invest in good materials. I continue to paint small, though I'm starting to paint a little bit bigger um, as I go along. And then, but most importantly, I think lesson seven, I paint what I love. And I find that as I do that, um, I love my paintings. I love the results because it's coming from my heart. So those are my seven lessons in 18 months of serious watercolor painting. And I hope you can take something from that and apply it to your own practice. Watercolor is a challenging, but a wonderful medium to paint in. I love it. I wanna do it the rest of my life and I wanna get better at it and I wanna share the journey with others. So this has been helpful again. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like. Hit the like button, I'd love that. And have a great day.